you look at the quote from the press secretary, again, it's a beautifully constructed object to create exactly this kind of Rorschach moment. Again, these are our kids. They belong to all of us. Right. They Mm -hmm. belong to all of us, which will be read by blue team loyalists as... That we, of course we, they do. They are it the responsibility of yeah. It takes a village, mm-hmm. and it will be read by the red team as oh, uh, they're not really your kids. Uh, leave them to us. Which is in fact, there's been an awful lot of that in school and elsewhere. Um, but but here's my point. Okay, the children are. I'll, it is civilization's responsibility to put children first. Let's put it that way. That mm-hmm. is actually true. Yep. Parents are the way that we typically do that. Mm-hmm. Right, and parents are not guaranteed to do a good job of this. But in general, at least we know that a parent's interests are in general aligned with their own children, mm-hmm. whereas the governments are not. Right, the government's interests can be exactly counter to the children. Um. So, parents are the are the primary tool. But here's the here's the issue. Yeah, let's take an analogous situation that has nothing to do with um, affirmative care or covid or any of the other controversial stuff Mm -hmm. in general parents have as they should extraordinary rights to decide what medical interventions to expose their children to right the nuremberg code says you have the right to informed consent in the case of a child who is too young to be properly informed and to consent to these things the parents stand in lieu of the children um, and they must have informed consent But this leaves us in a quandary with things like, I believe it's Christian scientists who don't believe in doctors. Um, Um, I don't know, maybe. Let's just say that there's some small but significant religious sect in which uh, I think the religious explanation is effectively, who are you to interfere with whatever God might be doing to you? Yep. Right? Now the problem is, do we collectively have the right to intervene on behalf of a child whose parents believe such a thing and has a curable but let's say fatal uh, condition that the parents do not want to treat right Right. i'm not saying i know the answer to that my instinct would be that we have the right to intervene but i'm not sure of that because i i'm not sure that i want to carve out that right in the face of governmental structures that will clearly abuse any opening and, uh, you know, drive a train through it. Right. So I don't know. All I'm saying is, guess what? At the Hmm. level of operationalizing the principle that you are referring to, this is a genuinely difficult puzzle, even if the principle itself is perfectly straightforward, which it is. Yes. There there are certainly um, edge cases. This doesn't feel like one. I don't think it is. Um, There are edge cases, as you have pointed out, with regard to, um, you know, life-saving interventions. Um, But then, of course, there are many things that have passed as life-saving interventions that have turned out not to be life-saving interventions. And so the, you know, those things that seem really, really clear will not be clear to some people. And even some of the people for whom those edge cases aren't clear, um, not all of them are crazy, right? Some of them had an anecdotal experience that is not something that is likely to ever happen again. But as a result, they say, no way, no how, not that thing for any member of my family because my cousin this, right? Well, And it's it's challenging. I I would say this is the other, you know, you and I have... um talked in general terms about this question which is getting less you know we have talked about the question whether or not the amish are right right and the short answer has been not exactly but they may have the right idea they may have spotted something and picked an arbitrary moment to step off the technological escalator but right nonetheless it doesn't mean it's the wrong decision but i would point out given the idea of metaphorical truth That Mm -hmm. metaphorical truth means something that isn't literally accurate, but stands in for a belief that you can't spell out that is literally accurate. The idea that, you know, well, who are you to interfere with God's, 
you know, physiological uh, plan for you. I don't think there's anything to the idea that there's a God that has a plan. And so there's obviously lots of cases where we can cure you of something. You know, if you have uh, an infection, there's no reason to let it go to gangrene if we have mm -hmm. an antibiotic that will cure it. Um, but I would say that traditions that are extremely cautious about medical intervention are looking more and more prescient given the level of iatrogenic harm that we are now seeing, COVID being the... Um, the most distilled and concentrated case where simply opting out of everything the medical establishment told you made you better off than following any of it, really. Well, and in some ways, I mean, you, you've found this for, for many, many, many years, but in some ways, the apparently strange bedfellows that are evolutionary biologists and the deeply religious, um, where we find ourselves on the same side of many issues increasingly, which is don't intervene until, unless you absolutely 100% know that you're not knocking down a fence a la Chesterton um, that has a reason that you don't not, do not yet understand. These, <clears throat> these alignments between, for instance, evolutionary biologists and <clears throat> the deeply religious are about um, recognizing that you know, the, the origin story is different, we don't think it's God. We think it's billions of years of evolution that have built things that are much more complex than we can know. Uh, but there is a respect for a set of forces, if you will, selection, God, um, by which we can know that our, that our belief that we simply got this and we can change it and we're good would be arrogant. And the interventionists, which is to say most of public health now, most of modern medicine, like is flying on hubris. They are just, it's all arrogance. Like we got this, this is not, eh. you know, it's not God. We don't really get evolution, whatever, whatever. we're going to fix these things because we fixed it once and it worked and we fixed it twice and it worked and oh, I didn't fix it that third time, but eh, things will happen. And those of us who are being cautious out of a sense of you have no idea. You actually have no idea. We are trying to have an idea, but we know the limits of our understanding here. That, I think, is something that is shared between the people who attribute their lack of understanding to there is there is another entity that has created this and has, has done it for a reason, and those of us who say, we don't believe in the entity, but there are, there are forces, specifically selection, that have built these things these processes and these structures and these systems over literally billions of years. And when you mess with one, you actually do not know what all you are messing with. You know, I had a uh, conversation, like a two hour conversation with Zev Zelenko shortly before he died. Um, he was one of the earliest and most vociferous COVID dissidents, uh, Orthodox Jew. And it was a shocking conversation. I mean, he was um, incredibly thoughtful in his approach to all of the surrounding issues and at the same time uh, deeply aware of very ancient roots of proper medical thinking. He, he, he uh, talked for 20 minutes about Maimonides, which is something I, mm. I was not even aware that. Wow there were conclusions worth looking for that far back. But um, anyway, the there is something. It doesn't really matter whether your reverence for this comes from, you know, a, a love of the self-assembling biological universe right. or from a belief that somebody wanted this to happen, right? The real question is, you know, are, are you motivated? Are you really rooting for it? And do you have a sort of, I mean, you're, you're right to point to Chesterton's fence. Yeah. Do you really understand how well constructed it is and therefore how unlikely it is that your intervention, if it is anything but simple and predicated on very secure assumptions, is likely to be positive, right? Do you have any idea how unlikely you are to improve that thing? Um, and medicine is suffering from 
an incredible arrogance, in part because we have this huge pharmacopoeia of molecules nobody understands that were tested under conditions where the people who own the patents were also doing the testing to see if they were safe and effective, right? And so, you know, doctors have this whole, you know, amazing mach medical machine to throw at people who have some sort of a complaint. And it's, you know, this Imagine is... Imagine them throwing a really sharp and heavy machine at people. I mean, frankly, people would be better <laughs> off in many cases. You can dodge it. Right, exactly. All right, yeah. you get a little bruise, but, you know, you know, that's not the doctor for you. But, um, but in any case, it was interesting to find yet another... Um, um, deep, re deeply religious person yeah. who, at the end of the day, you know, you, you, those who come from the secular side often expect of the deeply religious, you know, that they are inherently some sort of, I mean, uh, you know, they're they're quacks from somewhere else. And the fact <laughs> is, this is not um, this is not the experience, right? No. These are people who, yes, have a different fundamental understanding of the universe, but uh, that motivation just in the same way that parents are in general aligned with the interests of their children to an extreme degree to the extent that you believe that there's somebody who had this as a plan and that you are part of that plan you're probably motivated to be a pretty darn good doctor